Amen. Amen. All right. That video got happy. Amen. That's good stuff, huh? Amen. All right. Matthew 12. Matthew 12. We're going to look at verses 1 through 5. Matthew 12, 1 through 5. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples became hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat. But when the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples do what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he became hungry? He and his companions, how he entered the house of God, and they ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those with him, but for the priest alone. Or, have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priest in the temple break the Sabbath and are innocent? The corn that stirred up a stink. The corn that stirred up the stink. Man is a spiritually sick creature. He needs help. He needs help with a spiritual problem within his heart. Therefore, the great physician is his only hope. The great physician is man's only remedy. And so we have to understand that man's spiritual illness has affected him physically, mentally, and spiritually. Without Jesus Christ, <clears throat> man is a total loss. He's a wretched wreck. Let me say that again. Without Jesus Christ, man is a wretched wreck. Man's greatest problem is his failure to know and to understand the truth. Pilate, Jesus stood before Pilate, and Pilate's great question to Christ was, what is truth? What is truth, Pilate said, Unknowingly, as Pilate asked that question, he was staring truth in the face. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so man can never know and understand truth until he has a living encounter with Jesus Christ. Man must come to know Christ. Man must undergo a spiritual transformation. Man must experience a change that only Christ can implement. Man in his lost sinful condition, in his sinful state, he is spiritually blind, he is spiritually deaf, he is spiritually dumb. Jesus defined himself as the light of the world. The light of the world. Matthew 
4 and 16, Matthew quotes Isaiah the prophet, and he says, when Jesus comes on the scene, Matthew writes, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death, light is sprung up. Imagine with me this morning, if you will, just imagine this. Shouldn't be difficult to imagine, especially here in Florida. Imagine that there is no such thing as electricity as you and I know it today. So you have no lights. There is no source of light at all. And so when the sun goes down, what you have is pitch black darkness. The moon is hiding behind the clouds. It's pitch dark outside. There's not a star that can be seen in the heavens. I mean, it's dark. Dark as dark can get. And all of a sudden, there is the greatest flash of lightning that you've ever seen in your life. And what does that lightning do? It interferes with that darkness. That light is very visible to the eye. Bill, been in the military like myself, imagine this, imagine that same pitch black darkness and you're in a boat out in the Gulf of Mexico and it's so dark that you can't see your hand in front of your face and all of a sudden you let off a flare. That flare lights up the sky, it lights up the floor or the surface of the Gulf. That's what happened in the spiritual realm when Jesus entered into human history. He was a great light. He was the light entering into a world that was filled with spiritual darkness. So Jesus entered into this world as the light of the world, a gigantic light into a darkened world of sin. He brought the truth to us. He revealed God to us. And later on, as the church was founded and begun, we're told that he appointed apostles he appointed prophets. He appointed evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And why did he do that? To expound on the truth. Today, you and I are most blessed, we're most fortunate to have the written Word of God. Amen. <clears throat> Early church didn't have that. All they had was the Old Testament writings. We have been blessed with the written Word of God, which with the illuminating gift of the Holy Spirit, you and I, through God's written Word, we can know and understand the truths that God has for us. And so for the note takers, and getting ready to go back to school tomorrow, for the note takers, I want you to leave here with this. Understand that the Word of God provides us with all the light we need. The Word of God provides us with all the light that we need. And the first thing we can glean from our text here is this. Jesus Christ 
will always lead you in the way of truth. Jesus Christ will always lead you in the way of truth. And so here's Jesus in our story. Here's Jesus and his disciples, and they're on a Sabbath day stroll. And they find themselves walking through the cornfield. Now, please understand that the Sabbath was Saturday. It still is. In the church age, we have set aside Sunday as a special day of worship. But our Sunday is not the Sabbath. Sabbath was Saturday. And so we're told here that the disciples and perhaps even Jesus himself as they're on this Sabbath day stroll, they find themselves in the cornfield. Lo and behold, they get hungry. Imagine that. What do folk do when they get hungry? They eat. Today is Sunday. Is there anybody planning on eating after? Preacher has every intention of eating something. God will. Well, when you can't eat and keep anything down for a few days, Bill, you really appreciate it when you eat and keep it down, don't you? There's something we need to understand about the Sabbath. As we've already said, the Sabbath was on Saturday. That's why those folks that you and I know as the Seventh-day Adventists meet, they have their church on Saturday. And in reality, whether they realize it or understand it, in believing that, they're still under the law. We have to understand that although the Sabbath was one of the Ten Commandments, we have to understand that the Sabbath was part of the ceremonial law of Israel. And so these legalistic Pharisees, they stirred up a stink on this occasion. Now, keeping the Sabbath, again, was one of the Ten Commandments, which said, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Does anybody in here keep the Sabbath on Saturday? I doubt it. No, why? Because you're not required to. That was part of the ceremonial law under the theocracy of Israel. Keeping the Sabbath was the only, catch this, keeping of the Sabbath was the only one of the Ten Commandments that Jesus did not reiterate. All the others he reiterated. And so on this day, the disciples, they are picking and they're eating this corn in front of Jesus himself on the Sabbath. Now let me ask you this. Don't you think that if they had been breaking the law on this occasion, if they had been violating the the Word of God, don't you think that Jesus would have pointed out the error? 
Don't you think Jesus would have said, no, boys, we can't do that today. Today's the Sabbath. But he didn't, did he? Why? Because they weren't breaking any law. Jesus Christ will never condone the breaking of God's law. So you can always depend on Jesus to steer you in the right direction. The Pharisees, however, they became irate. In the days vernacular, we would say they had a hissy fit. You ever heard that? That southern thing? Yeah, they had a hissy fit. I mean, they just went all to pieces. Over this ordeal, they began to stir up a stink with Jesus, and they went on a tirade about his disciples breaking the law. And what did Jesus do? How did Jesus handle this situation? With the Word of God. Jesus took the Word of God and with it, He exposed the fallacy of the teachings of the Pharisees. He exposed the darkness that was working through them. In other words, He led them. He led them by feeding them the Word of God. He fed the Pharisees the Word of God. Likewise, He fed His disciples the Word of God. And so Jesus Christ will always lead you in the ways of truth. And it's the Word of God that provides us with the light that we need. The second point, the second thing I want to drive home with you this morning is this. Falsehoods will mislead you when you don't know the truth. Falsehoods will mislead you when you don't know the truth. And so the Pharisees here, they begin with their accusations. They are hurling their accusations at Jesus against the disciples. They are accusing the disciples of breaking the law, of violating the Sabbath. They went on and what they did in essence was they declared the disciples guilty of working on the Sabbath. Not now that I'm aware of, but in the past, some of those who are no longer a part of this fellowship, there have been times when we've had some very legalistic people in this church. Church is full of legalistic people throughout this country and around the world. Understand that the Pharisees were in reality the false teachers of Jesus' day. They were false teachers. What did they do? They twisted the Word of God. They became a law unto themselves. In other words, whatever they said meant. It was the law whether it agreed with this book or not. They had more authority than the Word of God. You ever heard of the Pope? Mm -hmm. You know, when he speaks so-called extra thinker today, that it's more important and has more authority than this book. At least according to them. They twisted the scripture. They became a law to themselves. Listen to what Jesus said about the Pharisees. Matthew 15 and 19, he said, But in vain they do worship me, 
teaching the doctrines and the commandments of men. Matthew 23 and 15, listen to what he said to the scribes and the Pharisees. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one convert, and when he's made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. Wow. You see, the Pharisees had devised and written some 3,000 legalistic laws that the Jews were to abide by. Now let me ask you, I could uh, let me I just got to belabor this point for a minute. We just looked at those two scripture verses. Jesus railed on the Pharisees. I mean, he stuck them hard as you could stick in him up. What kind of way is that for Jesus to speak to somebody? Why is he being so unloving? Speaking so harshly to the Pharisees because he understood that they and their teachings and their attitudes were causing harm. They had burdened the people with their man-made legalism. Do you understand that even in the present church age that false teachings, yes, even legalism still holds much of Christian captive? It runs rampant in movements across this country and the reason for it is so much ignorance in both the pews and the pulpits of American churches. Ignorance of the Word of God. That's why sound doctrine is so important, folks. We need to get that. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. Falsehoods will mislead you when you don't know the truth. The Word of God provides us with all the light that we need. The last thing I want you to see in this message is that the Word of God will cut through distortion and deception. The Word of God will cut through distortion and deception. Notice again how Jesus handles this situation. He confronts them head on with the Word of God. He doesn't start philosophizing. He doesn't start giving them all the philosophies of the ages. He doesn't start writing out some theory. No, He confronts them with the Word of God. He confronted the Pharisees just like he confronted Satan in the wilderness. He did it with the word. Folks, this is the only effective means of confronting Satan is the word of God. 
And if you don't know it, he'll shred you to pieces. He'll shift, he'll, he'll sift you like wheat. Notice what Jesus asked the Pharisees in verse 3. Have you read? Have you read? Folks, we need to get this. And we need to understand it. You and I, as God's people, we have an enemy whose desire is to have a field day with us. His desire is to deceive us and to mislead us and our only defense is the Word of God. As God's people, we are in a constant battle with the forces of darkness. What does the psalmist say about God's Word? Psalm 119, 105, Thy Word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light.